Well, it's been a while since I've done a YouTube video, so I figured this would be a good project to, to do something with. So bear with me, the video may be a little crappy, hopefully the audio is decent and you can see something. We'll work on getting some better lights in the next few videos, but we're going to get started. So this is a failed project from years past. It's an 80-20 uh, router table frame, or that's what it was supposed to be. And my goal is to turn this into a large format 3D printer. I'm looking to build something that can print uh, using large nozzles, uh, one and a half, two millimeter nozzle, high extrusion rates and really wide layers. So like I said, this is 8020. It's made out of the 2040 series so it's two inches wide and four inches tall with the legs being two inches square uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take these other legs that were originally designed for the table I'm going to take those and we're going to mount them in this area. We're going to shift these down half the rail and then mount these ones up above. And that'll give us the Z that we need uh, for the bed. So the bed's going to sit in here. It's probably going to be quarter inch mix six with silicone heaters underneath it uh, to be heated. We're going to fully enclose the printer, probably insulating it with some high density uh, polystyrene insulation on the sides, um, Lexan doors, and uh, it'll be an overhead gantry, and the gantry will move up and down with the prints being on the table. So the intention is that these prints are going to be heavy. My first print that I'm looking to have done on this is going to be in the 15 to 20 kilogram worth of plastic, and that's really just estimated. Uh, on my current pr printer, I'd have to print this in 25 sections, and that's the reason why it hasn't been printed yet. I'm not looking forward to that. So later on, we'll get into what the actual print is, but for now, let's flip this table back up on its side and join these into the corners. So there's actually 16 fasteners holding every corner together. Uh, they are threaded into the ends of the 2040 extrusion. You can hear how tight they are when they crack to let go. And then each corner has a gusset on it. So we have to loosen up all of them to the right amount and then we are able to slide it off. Let me tell you, this is hell to get a line the first time. So these were the original legs to the table, and they ended up being too long and putting the table up too high, or what was going to be. So we bought these shorter ones, and that's what we ended up using. So structurally, I'm not worried about the strength that this may lose by joining it this way. And if it is an issue, we can gusset the outside of it. So again, now there's eight fasteners for each section, for the upper and the lower. Should be plenty. Well, 
when I built this table originally, I actually went through and torqued all of these fasteners with a torque wrench to some specific, some specific torque, whatever a quarter 20 is supposed to be in aluminum. Since then, the table has been assembled and disassembled uh, three times, serving various stationary projects, mostly just a table. And now maybe it'll finally get a life as a CNC machine. I'm gonna need the ratchet for this one. So there it is, the first one. The first one. And you can see the seam there. Lined up right down the center. So now I'll go ahead and I'll do the other ones. And come back. All right, so you may be wondering what I'm doing when I'm putting the wrench in the holes and just moving it back and forth a few turns. So these 80-20 joining plates go inside, let's see if I can get a shot here, go inside the slots. All right, you can see that they go right in there. And as you can see, there's not a lot of room for the heads of the bolts to fit in those channels as well. So what I'm doing is raising and lowering the head of the bolts to where they don't catch being tight, but they don't bind in the channel being loose. So you've got to find that sweet spot. And that's what I'm doing is I'm finding the spot where it's the loosest. So now we can take our channel, our new one or extrusion, and we're going to line it up with those four, what do you want to call them, whatever they are, brackets, and slip it on there. And I'm just aligning the seam in the center line of this extrusion. This is the center detail of the extrusion. I'm just trying to split the gap just like that with the two of them. So now snug it up a little bit on each side. Looks pretty darn good. Snug it up this way. Make sure it sits in there and that that gap closes up. Actually opened a little that time. First one to do that. Snug them up. I think that looks fine. We might have to come back later and do some more adjustment. Um, but we got a lot of building before we start getting into fine adjustments. So, 
And this also doesn't take account that these rails, I'm sure, aren't cut to the thousandth of an inch equally. Um, so we'll have to compensate for that in probably the leveling mechanism that levels the gantry, because the gantry is going to be leveled and not the bed. Because I think trying to support a bed on screws that can be leveled, that can hold, I don't know, I'm sure you could print something that weighed 50 kilograms on this thing. That doesn't seem very feasible to me. So finish tightening these up and move to the next step. So when I moved this into this bedroom, I had to take the feet off because it wouldn't fit through the doorway. So last step is put the feet back on and those go in these brackets I had made years ago. So those are threaded uh, 5, 8, 16, I believe. I think that's correct. And uh, this extra hole was actually for when it was a, supposed to be a router. It was, that was to bolt it to the floor, to the concrete floor with a Hilti bolt. So go ahead, screw these in there and we'll stand it back up. One done, three to go. Got all four feet back in there now. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go in as easy as they came out. I'm not sure why that is. But I'm going to go ahead and flip it back up onto its feet now. massive 3D printer. I'm about five and a half feet tall and this is clearly right up to my eyes. So by the time this thing's done it's gonna be five and a half six feet tall. Uh, it's gonna be a big printer. So like I said uh, hoping to print some large prints really wide layers. Uh, if I can print two mil layer width Fantastic, if I could print five mil layer width, even better. That means I'd have to do my project with one layer, which would be perfect. Um, I'm going for waterproof. Uh, it's something that has to go in water. So the less chances of it to leak, the better. So I'll leave you with a couple pictures and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.